Okay, cool. I am Veloshni. I'm an intimacy coach based in South Africa. And um, some of my experiences um, on LinkedIn and um, I, I think majority is uh, LinkedIn, not so much on the other platforms like Instagram and Facebook has been uh, where people have um, just kind of misinterpreted or don't understand what an intimacy coach does and um, reach out to me um, for some obscene kind of stuff like uh, wanting me to look at the pics of their penises to tell them whether they are the right size. Um, also, I mean, some prominent people like doctors as well. Really? Reaching out, yeah, reaching out to me about like in, masturbation, but the gory details. Um, and regardless of me asking them, um, you know, to stop the in inappropriate conversation, because um, I'm, I think I'm quite diplomatic and direct um, in trying to control this, but some of it does get um, out of hand where they don't know where to draw the line. Curious, are they, are they propositioning you or are they looking at you as like a sex coach and I have this sexual problem or sexual dysfunction and acting for you to potentially fix it? Um, yeah, so that's a very interesting question, Gregory, because I get both. Um, my inbox gets like every week I get three to five emails detailed with, um, you know, the sad life that they've led and the um, spouse has passed away, etc. They left with kids and they're looking for a life partner. Um, so I don't know why they see me as a, as a target, but I've led to believe that I'm not the only one. <laughs> no, um, <so. laughs> exactly. So I think they just, it's almost like fishing. You're just putting your net out there or you're just casting your line and the one that bites, yeah. um, you get lucky with. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So, so, so to answer your question, Gregory, it does happen where people inbox me, email me, and also where I get inboxed on DMs on um, LinkedIn with regards to my post, but um, almost like a very twisted uh, approach to, um, to, to, to the approach that I'm, I'm actually trying to educate on the platform. Um, it's being misinterpreted. So, okay. So we morphed into social me too because Gazelle, who's one of our early contributors, she's running the Facebook group and she said, as did this uh, lady Suyapa, um, that Facebook was like a jungle in comparison with LinkedIn. But you don't you're not finding that, Veloshni. Um, I don't spend a lot of time on, on Facebook. So perhaps uh, I'm, perhaps that's the, you know, I do have a page for Ultimacy. However, um, the, um, the followers for that page are very, you know, the, 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 the interaction is very different. So um, I also don't look at Messenger on Facebook. So I could probably just be mi missing it completely. Okay, we are well. Suyapa uh, gave this, so it was Suyapa who's a life coach who coached us into the social me too. And she, the story she told was that she opened it to make connections for one night, and she had over 400 applications, typically mostly male. And all uh, this, in, this, I mean, you say, well, we use the word inappropriate, but crude sexual is. It's it's just there's no there's there's nowhere that's a, that's okay, um, and this is one of the things. So Gregory, I've been thinking about how this is morphing out. Um, I secured the domain name Social Me Too um, because I think that all the different areas of problems with social media so racism um misogyny 
sexual uh, abuse, um, grooming, fraud, catfishing, all these various things, they affect people and occasionally a story is told, but then it goes away because we lose, we lose focus. If it's not there all of the time, it just isn't there. And so if we could combine all those groups and get them to so the voice we we have is has more power there's a post i did um there's this um rock pop star called lizzie or lizzo um and she got twitter and facebook to take down com comments about her so with enough influence enough power we should be able to, to make a difference. I don't have the smartphone volitionally, as you know. How does it feel when this sort of thing is, is coming to the palm of your hand? I think I get completely annoyed. Um, but it's also being misunderstood. Um, and I also think it's just ignorance. Um, I don't see it as misunderstanding any longer. No. Um, because it's blatant. Um, and to be honest, what's been happening is because I'm not giving people attention now in my, in, you know, LinkedIn messages, they're now coming into my posts um, and leaving comments. And recently I tagged social me too. Uh -huh. um, and, I, and I responded to the person uh, before I knew it, the comment was deleted, I think by the person huh. and, <laughs> and I didn't see it. So I thought to myself, mm. oh, this is a good way to deal with them. But I just think it's rude. It really is rude because you you're on a mission because um, you have a certain vision. Um, but don't try to disrupt that, mm. you know, with someone else yeah. that's trying to make a change, a positive change. Right. So, and I've been thinking about this as well and, and how technology has really played into this. It's, you know, it's a blessing and a curse, right? It's a blessing in the way that allows us to really reach out and, and have a voice uh, and grow our businesses in, in, in kind of broad ways that we couldn't do before without spending maybe lots of money on advertising. It's also enabled, you know, um, opportunities like transcontinental friendships, like uh, meeting Jonathan and, and other folks as well. But the, the downside is, right, um, it's also enabled this anonymity and empowered people to, to do things they normally probably wouldn't do in person. So there's always been those men out there, right, that would um, make inappropriate, uh, you know, comments or, you know, approach women and, and just, you know, they'll, they'll try and get on every woman they can at a bar or even at a, at a store just to see if someone will say yes. Um, but there's only a, a percentage of them that would, would do that because they fear rejection. Okay, so here's, we got into this discussion, I don't know if you were there, Gregory. Oh no, it was the one you couldn't do with Mary Lynn and Anna Sua. Um, so there was a story in the UK that teenage girls, so actually not even teenage, 12 year old girls in going into the next, uh, into big school mm -hmm. were getting on average 10 requests for nude pictures a night from boys in the school so the problem with the male's belief and approach to women is endemic and it's more extreme apparently so you look at afghanistan falling to shit and you go those poor women what's going to happen to them. And 